What's up YouTube, I'm back in the still standing garage and today I'm working on the 83 Regal. I started taking it apart, I wasn't planning on making a video on this, but I said, you know what, before I go any further, might as well make a video out of it and um, put it out there and hopefully help somebody else out. So I was warming up the car and as it was warming up, I was just sitting in it waiting for it to warm up and then I hear a pop sound, my voltage gauge stopped working and then I got the voltage light on the dash. So I'm like, damn, I knew right away that I popped the fuse. I turn off the car. And then I go under the dash, that's where the fuse block is, it's down there. And I went to go check to see what fuse I popped and it was the gauges fuse is what I popped. I replaced it, as soon as I turned the key on, popped again. So then it kept doing it over and over and I'm like, okay, something's shortening now, something's going on. Let me show you which one it is. So it's gonna be that yellow one right in the middle of the screen. Let me turn the key, see if you can hear it or see it. See that? And as you can see right there, I already went through a lot of fuses. That's not all of them. I threw a whole bunch of them away too. I could have used a circuit breaker, saved me some money on some fuses, but it is what it is. That's what I had. I thought it was going to be an easy fix, but here I am chasing all this around, seeing if I could figure it out, see if uh, maybe a wire is uh, grounding out or maybe a component is uh, shortening out. So that's why I want to take apart the dash here, take apart the, the cluster, the gauges, and maybe the gauges are bad. I don't know. I want to look back there. I do want to replace the bulbs on here too and clean everything back there. I've never been behind the dash uh, since I bought this car. I bought this car in 2001, so I want to replace a light bulb four, especially for the left turn signal. The turn signal works, but the light in here, the indicator doesn't tell me that it's uh, lighting up, so I want to replace those bulbs. I did pull some wiring diagrams, and I got these from, I printed these out from MalibuRacing.com. I'll put a, a link in the description of where exactly I got them, but these are very helpful. There's the gauge fuse right there, and it tells me that the pink and black wire is what feeds what comes out of that fuse and what feeds pretty much the the, the gauges that's one component that it that it feeds and then over here we got the deck lid release so the trunk so there's multiple pages here i'll put a, a link in the description like i said so if you guys need a copy of that but this is what's going to help me chase and check each component i'm gonna start disconnecting one at a time let's get to it let's start taking things apart in order to remove the bezel here i have to remove the knob the light switch knob here or else i can't remove the bezel and to remove the knob all you have to do is turn it and you can see that little gap right there so let me pull that with the baby screwdriver you can stick it in there just stick it in there and you push towards you and i'll show you the clip that's in there you can remove the knob and you see that little clip in there? That's what we're pressing in. Let's see if I can get a little closer. That's all we're pressing in. Once we press it in, it releases it from the stem. Don't need to remove the stem right now. I'll show you how to remove it if you want to uh, once we get in there. Then this little plastic piece needs to unthread. It is plastic, so we gotta be real careful. We don't cross thread that because I do wanna keep it. Another thing to remove is the knob here for the defog before we could start unclipping the bezel here. So this is a little plastic piece, set it off to the side. Just turn the key, bring this all the way down. Then we can start unclipping the bezel. And now I can carefully start popping this off. It is held down by, by clips. There's no screws out here. I've gotta be real careful in popping it off. I'll start at the bottom here. This is a 40 year old car, so I, I just don't want any of this stuff to disintegrate because I'm pulling it off. So you can see it come off already real slow. Don't want to break anything. Come on. Let's go on this side. There it is. And then for me, I have this wire, this wire here is for my alarm. I just have to disconnect it from down there, but there it is. It comes off, set it off to the side. We can clean that off later too. And this is what it looks like without the bezel. Real dirty, real dusty. Got to clean all that up. All this over here. See that right there, we can start taking off the screws. So now if I was gonna replace the, the light switch here, in order to remove the stem, cause I don't think a new light switch comes with the stem and the knob. So you have to take it off of your old one and put it on the, on the new one. There's a button back here. I won't be able to show you, can't see it on camera, but I can see it in person. But there's a button that you can st stick a screwdriver here and you press it. Once you press it and you pull on this, it'll come off, the stem will come off. 
A lot of people I've read that have issues trying to get to that button and they're trying to reach it from the back side, like underneath, underneath the dashboard, but you should be able to reach it from the front after you take off the bezel. It's, it's not a problem. It's not that big of a deal to remove. So I'm gonna start removing all the screws here. There's screws for the, for the cluster, for the gauges here. They're right here, all the black ones. Let me see, there's one over here. There's another one right there. Right, actually right there. There's another one right there. So gotta remove all those. Then I should be able to pop off the cluster. Before I start removing the screws to remove the gauge cluster, you see that little cable? It's a little baby cable there in the middle of the screen. That right there is connected to the column and that's what controls the gears. And I'll show you that right now. So as I'm rotating it, you see how the, the gear indicator is moving around. For those of you that have one that doesn't rotate, doesn't doesn't indicate there, maybe your little cable is disconnected or it's maybe it's missing. I didn't know that that's, a, that's how it was controlled, but I found that out when I was replacing the, the turn signal switch on the on the column here. So let me show you how to, how to unclip that. What you have to do is bring it all the way to the top so there's not a lot of tension on the little baby cable. Then we go down here and I'll show you where it's at. And you can see it right here. It's this one right here. And all you have to do is push it back. Let me see if I can get it to focus. Right there. And all we have to do is push it back and see how it came off. And that comes off with the, the cluster. So it needs to go with this. So that's why we have to disconnect that. And to make it easier on myself, I am going to lower the column. It will make it easier to remove the cluster. Gives me enough room to do that. And... The way you do that is you take off those nuts that are right there. Those two nuts, you take those off and the column drops. And that will give us enough room. I went ahead and I removed those nuts. And as you can see, look at how much room I got. Look at that. It's a whole bunch of room there to, to be able to remove this. So let's start taking off those screws. All the screws are removed. So now I gotta remember that the that the speedometer cable is attached to it. So I need to disconnect it from my cruise control out there in the engine bay and that will give me enough slack with the, the cable to bring it out enough to disconnect it from the back. All right, and over here, my speedometer cable, it's gonna be the top one here on my cruise control. That one goes through the firewall. So let's take that one off. Pop that out through there. Push it out enough to get it straight so we can get enough slack in there. There it is. There's a little grommet there that we could take off and just leave it there. So I, when we pull the cluster, it goes with it. All right, now we can start pulling it towards us really carefully because we don't want to damage anything. Pull it back. Careful. I know there's tension because of the cruise control or the speedometer cable. So just gotta make sure there should be another cable, another wire that should be for the, I believe it's the cruise control wiring as well. So I just gotta make sure we're not damaging anything. So see, it's very important to have enough slack here. You can pull it enough. There's a cable, I'll show it to you right now, but I, I can feel it, there's tension there. There's that. So you see this cable here? Actually, let me see if I can show you here. So you see that little screw there? That little screw needs to come off to let that cable release. It's not a clip. The speedometer cable actually has a clip at the very top there. That needs to be pressed in. And once that, that's pressed in, it, it releases the, the speedometer cable and we're able to remove the whole cluster. And there it is. 
So that little clip right here, once you press it in, it releases the, the speedometer cable. And then this is where that other cable goes to that screw or with that screw and take it off. And there it is, completely off. This is what it looks like with the cluster off. My plug's up there. That's the plug that connects to the back of the cluster. It doesn't clip on, it just connects to that, that spot right there. It gets pressed in once the cluster is screwed on. That's what holds it in. The plug inside the cluster and powers the whole back of this and the gauges. You see all these right here, these silver spots here. These are the gauges like there, right there. And then these right here are the light bulbs. I'll show you how to replace those light bulbs later. But I went ahead and I already checked the past here to see if any of them were burnt or if they look damaged at all because that could possibly cause the short and hopefully it's not the gauges themselves that are messed up because that means that i will have to take apart each one of them and check each one of those gauges to make sure that they're working properly but that's the last thing i want to do so what i'm gonna do next is i'm gonna go ahead and turn the, the ignition to the on position and see if i still pop that fuse if i still pop that fuse i'm gonna continue to chase the the pink and black wire which is the wire that's coming out of that that gauges fuse that keeps popping i'll see if i can show you in the back yeah you can see it in the plug there so I'll try to put an arrow there. The pink and black wire is what's coming from that 20 amp fuse. And I'm going to try to check what else connects to it or to that wire and start disconnecting those components. And, and if I disconnect all of them and I still keep popping that fuse, and that means that that cable is damaged somewhere and I'm going to have to take more stuff apart. But uh, let's go through the process of elimination and I'm going to turn it on right now and see what happens. All right, YouTube. So I already went ahead and I put in a new fuse there. Let's uh, turn the key and see what happens. Yeah, it still pops. All right, so it still popped it. So I'm going to keep checking. I'm going to go through my diagrams right there and check the next thing and see where we go. All right, YouTube. So I ended up finding out what my problem was, what's shortening out. And the thing is that it's not on my diagrams over there that I printed out. So I started chasing the pink and black wire and I ended up finding out what else it's plugged into. And it's plugged into that piece right there, which is called the cruise control brake switch. Now, obviously, my car came equipped with cruise control. I have all the components except the components that go to the carburetor. So technically, the, the cruise control does not work. I can leave that unplugged and the car will drive just fine without blowing the fuse. And like I said, I chased that wire. I saw it there. I unplugged it. I turned the key on. The fuse didn't pop. As soon as I plug it in, the fuse pops. I do want to replace that. It's not that expensive. I don't think it is. It's not going to be that expensive, so why not replace it and have that on point there? And then later on in the future, I do want to get my components for the carburetor and have the cruise control working properly. So I'm glad I found it. I'm glad that it was that and it wasn't like a wire, that wire, that pink and black wire, and I didn't have to chase it around. And I'm glad that it wasn't my any of my gauges uh, or the gauge cluster because I know if it would be, uh, I would want to keep it as original as possible, at least the cluster and try to find the gauge if it was bad but they're hard to find and if you find them they want a lot of money for them so i do need to order that that part i also want to take apart this piece right here this whole thing right here i need to take that apart because i need to get back there to get that light bulb out the little baby light bulb there the only way to take it off is from the back side so i need to take this off to get back there and see what number that is so i go order that that light bulb and then the light bulbs that go on these right here and i'll show you how to replace those i am ordering led lights i, I am going to also show you what that cruise control brake switch looks like in my hand because it's kind of hard to look down there and then once i show it to you i'll go ahead and replace it and then we keep it moving from there All right, all the screws are off, so this should just come off. Yep, come off, twist it off. So it clears the, the column over here. There it is, completely off. Gotta clean that up too. Get all that nastiness out of there. And you know what, there's a light bulb behind this one too. So I am gonna take that off. I do wanna clean this one up. Now this one here is the light bulb too. Want to replace that light bulb too. Now this little box right here, see that right there? Let me see if it's showing up on the camera. I'm not sure if you can see it, but it says resume cruise and this, it has security and then water and fuel. But I think the water and fuel is for um, for diesel en engines, not, not this engine here. I don't know, correct me if I'm wrong, but 
I want to clean all this up, clean these up, make sure I put them back in there, make them look real nice. And then now this one right here, this is a little light bulb. It comes off from the bag, you just twist it off. And it's a little baby light bulb. Here's a better view of that little light bulb. See that right there? So this is a T7. That's the number of this light bulb, little baby T7. And then the ones that go on here and the rest of the cluster, these are T10. All right, YouTube, and here's a new switch, brand new. I'll give you the part number right here. I'll put a link in the description as well for this. That's the part number right there. But this little switch is the one that I'm gonna replace. I'm gonna go ahead and replace it. And I'm also gonna clean all this up. I'm gonna hit all this with the with the paintbrush and a vacuum. I'm gonna clean it up as much as possible. And there it is, I already replaced the, the cruise control brake switch. This is the old one. As you can tell, it looks all dusty, all busted. It's probably 40 years old. I don't ever remember replacing this. So the way I replaced it is before I took it off, I just marked it with a Sharpie, as you can see right there. That's my sharp, Sharpie uh, mark line. I marked it and then I took it off. And once I took it off, it just unscrews. Obviously you take off the plug and there's a, a vacuum hose here. You unplug all that, unscrew it. And then all I did is transfer that line there to my new one and then put it in. I wish I could record down there, but it's really tight down there uh, to, to work and record at the same time. All right, now that it's all cleaned up, it's time to start taking off these bulbs, or at least this one, replace this one so I can start putting things back together. Let's see, I don't think I mentioned what this bulb is for. So this is for the rear defrost. So this is a switch for the rear defrost, and the light bulb lights up the, the indicator on the, the bezel, and it will show defrost, and that's what it what it lights up. So let's, let's take this bad boy off. Let me see if I can take it off without busting it. Oh, it's not that bad. It's a little little baby one and here are the light bulbs they come in a set all I need is one there's only one th this size on the whole dashboard but it's all good it's good to have them and I got these from Amazon I'll put a link in the description for these if you guys need to get one and replace that one bulb this is what it looks like out of the bag it's real tiny I don't think polarity matters we'll find out I won't button up the whole dashboard until I know they all light up correctly so bump it in all right let's put it in there push it in and then twist and there it is it's on there all right it's time to replace the light bulbs on the cluster now so all the light bulbs are in here on all these gray spots here and then all these black ones here and this gray one here so all you have to do is push push and twist to the left and there it is they come off Pop these off, same way as, as we did that little baby one. Put this off to the side. And then I got the light bulbs from Amazon as well, link in the description. These are T10s, I think I already said that. So all you gotta do is uh, replace all of them. So let's do it. I don't think the polarity matters on these either. So you gotta pop them in whichever way. But like I said, I am gonna try them on before I button up the whole dashboard and before I put on all the screws. So there it is, put it back in. And let's do the rest. And there it is. All of them are on there. So there's a total of 11 on the cluster. 11 of the light bulbs that need to be replaced. I did buy two bags. Each bag comes with 10, so I bought a total of 20. So it's 11 on the cluster, 11 on the cluster here, and then the one that's right here, this one right here, and that's about it. So let me put this back on, then we could test it and see what it looks like, let's go. And there it is YouTube, I put everything back together, vacuumed all that stuff down there, all that mess that I made. Everything went on there pretty smooth, I didn't have any issues with anything. Let me show you what the lights look like. All right, check it out. Look how bright that looks. That looks real clean. I really like the way that everything turned out. My voltage gauge works again. Check it out. You see that? 
I went up, so it's working again. The seatbelt light comes on sometimes, so I gotta see what's going on with the seat and the seatbelt. Everything else turned out pretty good. I need to replace those lights with some LEDs too, the courtesy lights. Another thing I wanna show you, check it out. You hear that? The buzzer? It never worked in my car. And my buzzer is actually behind the, the stereo here, right in the bottom in the back. Sometimes the buzzer is on this side, on some G-Bodies is on this side, right above the brake release. It's right there, but for me, like I said, it's over here on this side, and it's buzzing right now because the lights are on. So you see that? Another thing is that for me, my ignition, the buzzer for the ignition, the key's in there right now, but it's not buzzing to alert me that it's in there. So you have to push it in to make a sound, but but it's all good. The, the little clip that goes inside the column is actually brand new, and I thought that was going to fix it before, and it didn't. But it's not a big deal. The ignition still works for me, so... It's not a big deal if the buzzer works uh, or doesn't work when the key's in there, but it is what it is. So don't forget to hit that like button. Don't forget to subscribe if you're a new viewer. And don't forget to check out the Still Standing store. Thank you for watching. G-Body Still Standing.